The following KQED production was produced in high definition. And their buns are something I have yet to find anywhere else. So I'm not inviting you to my house for dinner. <laughs> Breaded and fried and gooey and lovely. In the words of Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. You've heard of a connoisseur? I'm a common sewer. Or they knew I had to ward off some vampires or something. <laughs> and let's talk desserts, gentlemen, because I can see you both were waiting for desserts. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Enjoy yoga, cooking classes, organic cuisine, hikes, and evening entertainment at Rancho La Puerta Spa and Fitness Resort in Mexico, 45 minutes from San Diego, RanchoLaPuerta.com. Oakland International Airport. Check us out on Facebook to see what's new at OAK. Fly Oakland International. It's your airport. Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. It's a special episode this week, as our guests are very familiar with the camera. They're all Bay Area celebs. First, you may not know her face, but you will recognize her voice. Chic geek Andrea Kissick is a radio editor and television narrator. Her job is to raise science and environmental literacy, while her zeal is for the love of wine. And journalist Tui Vu began her career right here at KQED-FM. Now a local TV co-host with a passion for food in the city, she keeps her finger on the pulse of the dining scene, her toe in the bay, and her eye on the plate. Raj Mathai hit the ball out of the park, made the perfect play, and nailed a slam dunk when he became a news anchor. To maintain his stamina for news and sports, he indulges his Indian heritage with dishes that remind him of family at a little spot in Burlingame called Roti Indian Bistro. My name is Sunil Sunny Arora. I'm the owner and executive chef of Roti Indian Bistro in Burlingame. We serve Northern Indian cuisine. Indian cuisine is based on the ancient science of health from India. Modern Indian cuisine is basically classic Indian cuisine. The modern twist is we serve it with light curries, not too heavy in the, on the spices, while retaining the therapeutic qualities of Indian cuisine. The tandoor is our clay oven fired with mesquite charcoal. We make freshly baked breads. We marinate meats and seafood and roast it in the tandoor. Then we also have curries, chutneys, salads, and biryanis. Biryanis are rice entrees. We've got a full wine list and we have a full bar. We've been here about eight years now and I've had a great time these, these eight years. We get all kinds of customers families, business people. We also have weddings, we have receptions, we have parties. We pretty much get everyone here. <laughs> At Rotin and Bistro, we strive to give you great Northern Indian cuisine, great service, great ambiance, and great value. All right, Raj, now you were born in India, right? Yes, I was. So what, you know good Indian food. I mean, what is your benchmark for Indian cuisine? Well, here's the deal. Most people that are Indian, and I'm Indian, <laughs> will say the best Indian food is in your own kitchen. Right. You don't go out to Indian food. Right. But that's why I love Bistro Roti. It, it's phenomenal. It's fresh. Mm -hmm. It's vibrant in terms of the colors, not only in the food, but just right. the restaurant. And it's like a bistro feel that has a great wine list. And right. I know you would appreciate that. <laughs> of course it's, I do. It's you Indian know, food we all have to drink. We know that. <laughs> it's Indian food that's paired with wine, mm -hmm. and that hits it out of the ballpark right. for me. I thought they had a good choice of wines by the glass, mm -hmm. which is always a good measurement for yes. me. Uh, and they had a Argentinian Pinot Grigio, which mm -hmm. kind of had an earthy taste, was reasonably mm -hmm. priced, a good pour. Yeah, I was impressed. Raz, do you have a go-to dish? I mean, when you... Absolutely. The tandoori mixed grill. It's okay. just fresh fish, fresh meats, fresh vegetables. They don't just 
hit you over the face with Indian spices. Biso roti kind of lets the, the vegetables and the meats speak for themselves, and it just kind of marinates in a nice hint of the spices. It's just a nice neighborhood place with excellent food and good wines to me. And do you agree? Do you, did you like this spot when you visited Twee? You know what I did? And you know what was funny? By coincidence, Raj and I were there on the same night. No, I came not. Yes, yeah. I was. Yes, we were. So I did it. I came in. Yeah, what are we I was studying the menu. Some guy comes up, taps me, and I look up, and we look at each other, and we went, no way. You have got to be kidding me. Did he at least buy you a glass of wine? No. He did not even tell me about the tandoori mixed squirrel. He didn't, didn't even wanna, tell me that's I, what I should get. I didn't want to tip off anything. Right. I just wanted to hang out and, and just be myself. Oh, I, would, I, would, I was sitting there thinking, oh, I hope she gets this. I hope she gets this. But I wanted it to be organic right. and just right. naturally have it right. flow. Right. So what did you get? I got the, um, what is, is it the chicken pakoras? Am I pronouncing that chicken correctly? Chicken pakoras, yeah. And that's the chicken curry. Oh, that was lovely. It was complex and creamy, and it had some sliced almonds on top, mm -hmm. which gave it a really nice nuttiness. Right. And they have some of the best naan I've ever had mm -hmm. to dip in that curry. Andrea's shaking her head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. you agree. Yeah. I mean, and, and I liked it so much, I asked the owner, right. Sunny, if I could see where they uh, bake it. And he said yes. And both our kids were there last night, and they got a, quite a show. It's made in this, this uh, round oven with real charcoal, so it has this great smoky flavor. Mm -hmm. And then they brush butter on top of it. Oh, That's why it was so savory. Everything's you know, better with butter. And, and yes. I've been going to this restaurant for many years now. I've never seen them do this whole process of making the naan. Tui you walks gotta in. Hang with me. You gotta hang with me. And you got these big time buddy. celebrities walking in, and next thing I know, all of our kids are getting a full demonstration of the naan. I don't know that she's a little like the prettier than you. I'm just saying. She I'm just is. Saying. <laughs> and what did you have? You shook your head well, at the naan. The so. naan, I had the goat cheese naan, which oh. was like, you know, it was just, uh, it was sinful. It was so good, and it just was melt in your mouth. I could have stopped with the goat cheese naan and been perfectly happy. I'm glad I didn't, because I went on to have, we had salmon curry, which mm. just had this real, I mean, what I like are the spice, the spices there are so well balanced. Mm. Everything works for me except the Jinga tikka. That was the prawns tikka. Okay. That was a little bit too heavily spiced, I thought. Mm -hmm. I, the turmeric was so strong that I couldn't even really taste the prawns. That would be my only complaint about the restaurant was the seafood didn't work quite as well as the meat dishes. My wife loves everything vegetarian there. She loves this, the traditional uh, dal that, yeah. that's served there. The dal is very fresh, very nice. Yeah, this was really creamy. Right? And the sog alu. Sog is spinach, mm -hmm. and then alu is potato. It's not something I usually get, but my wife said, oh my gosh, we have to get this. We rarely get it. Excellent. And I'm not a sog alu guy, but guess what? I knew that about you. <laughs> For some reason, I Even knew that. the name sounds great. Sog alu. I'm going to be getting myself some sog alu. The and if you can go there. and see Tui there, then it's even better. <laughs> and what other dishes did you have, Andrea? You know, it was hard because it was rich because mm -hmm. we'd started with the goat cheese naan. So, you know, it, by that point, we, we got rich. to dessert. It was yeah. like, uh, I don't know. And so what we about had a value? Did you appetizer. think that this was a good price okay. ratio? It was a little bit pricier than a lot of Indian restaurants I go to in, I say, agree. North Oakland and San Francisco. I thought the yeah. food was good. The atmosphere was warm. The service was uh, very nice. I don't think it's overpriced, but yeah, it's it's not a quick $8 curry dish and you're out. It right. came out to, I think, about 40 45 bucks each per person for mm -hmm. our group. And I'm in the same boat that you are. It's At the end of that meal, it's it's rich, it's nice, yeah, I right. have wine, right. but I just have to save room for that dessert, that cool <laughs> feed. It's great. And then my wife looks at me and just hits me over the head like, you're just expanding. <laughs> I don't think so. You didn't recommend that to me either, Raj. <laughs> What's the point of having a good Indian friend if you don't recommend any next, dishes? Next time, let's all go together. <laughs> yeah. All right, Raj, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. It's a nice, fresh place to go for Indian food, a good vibe on the peninsula, and I'll see you there next week. <laughs> all right, next week. <laughs> um, lovely, clean. I liked that. And the owner, Sunny, is a lovely, charming man. Loved the uh, the delicate spices. Everything comes together really nicely. But I would stick with the meat dishes and just kind of leave the seafood for someone else. Oh, okay. And Andrea, tasty, uh, well balanced spices, good food, and a very warm atmosphere. All right. If you would like to try Roti Indian Bistro, it's on Park Road at Burlingame Avenue in Burlingame. The telephone number is six five zero three four zero seven six eight four. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted. And the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $20.
Andrea's Pick is a community hangout where reclaimed, recycled, and reused materials combine with wine on tap for a truly green environment. Ah, that's music to her ears. You'll find this place among the condos and warehouses around Jack London Square. It's called Chop Bar. Chop Bar in West Africa is a place where people go and hang out and they eat and they drink and we wanted to create a place similar to that for the locals to enjoy themselves. My name is Chris Bastina and I'm the owner of Chop Bar with Lev Delaney. We have beers on tap, most notably Linden Street Brewery. We also feature wine on tap. We have two whites and six red wines. We want our food to uh, reflect a sense of place. Uh, we live in Oakland, Northern California, um, so we draw on that. We buy whole animals, we butcher them down at our production kitchen. Um, we make our own charcuterie, we make our own sauerkraut. We're working on getting outside the corporate food system, doing everything house made and buying direct whenever possible. And uh, I think that's gonna give people an emotional connection that they're gonna remember. You know, I like to think that if someone was visiting Oakland from another country, they could come here and get a really good feel of what the food is like in this area. We want people to come to Chop Bar and feel like it's an extension of their house, an extension of their living room or dining room, and a place where they could go and see and meet their friends and people who live in the neighborhood. Now, Andrea, Chop Bar is sort of a West African term for, you know, a place where you hang out, kind of like Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be sort of this roadside stand where people can get anything from a good cup of coffee in the morning to a really good cocktail or a glass of wine late at night. Somebody brought me there for brunch, and their brunches are amazing. I had baked eggs with a roasted uh, tomato red pepper mm -hmm. sauce and a great cup of coffee, and, ah, uh, I was hooked. And these guys have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, mm -hmm. and the wine on tap program. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we're we get, in, in, really before also we get into the food, because this is a wine crowd, I love <laughs> yeah. you guys, you know that. Let's talk a little bit about that, because you, as I mentioned, write for Bay Area Bites, and it, it's quite a trend in the Bay Area to do wines on tap. Well, there's less waste, yes. and it's there's less overhead for, for the owners, so that's passed on to the customers. It's fresh, right. you know, wine by the glass often might have been open the night before, and it's local. Everybody talks about local ingredients for restaurants, for food, but but often not for wine. And we have such an amazing wine industry in California. Right. A lot of the, these wineries are urban wineries that are right around the corner. Right around the Chop corner, Park. J.C. Cellars and not all Not a lot of carbon and, emissions yeah. to bring, That's you right. know, the wine right. fill up the well, keg. Since we're on the issue of drinks, I have to say that this place has a great bar. I mean, that bar yeah, takes up almost half the restaurant, <laughs> but <laughs> it's... The bartender does a great job. I had a basil gimlet. Those are great. Oh, oh my oh. God, with cucumber, vodka, and lime juice, and who knows what else was yeah. in there, but it was good, whatever it was. That was one of the best drinks I had ever had. I went with these handcrafted cocktails, right. yeah. and I'm not usually a cocktail guy, and they came up with this great suggestion. I had so much fun there. Yeah, and, and they have drinks like hot, you know, hot teacher or something. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Hot for teacher. Hot for teacher. I know. Service usually comes with like a smile and a lot of tattoos. Right. Like about it too. But all the cocktails are you, you know, they use fresh juices, and I think that makes a big difference. They mix everything there, and I asked, and our server was great. She really got into it. It was just a fun service, a fun vibe there. And what about the food? When you go, what do you get? I love the burger. I mean, the best thing for me is a good burger with avocado and homemade aioli sauce, a little bacon. Um, I've had the meatloaf there before that's really moist and crunchy on the outside and a really creamy garlic mashed potatoes, so good comfort food. And they're doing great things with salmon right now. You know, it's the best season like in forever for king yes. salmon right now. I had the salmon. Oh, good. And yeah. it really was among the best I've had. I would rank it right up there with some of the great salmon I've had from Seattle and Vancouver. Really? That wow. fresh, that flaky, that delicate. And it had the perfect accompaniments. It had some onions, some peas, some carrots. So they were all good friends of the salmon without overpowering the salmon. It was a really good dish. And obviously you drank your dinner maybe? Because <laughs> you didn't we, were, we were on the topic of drinks. <laughs> we were on the topic of drinks. Uh, you had food then. <laughs> I can leave the table right now. <laughs> Liking all this estrogen <laughs> around you, admit it, Raj. <laughs> the food, I, I really, first of all, I love, I love the vibe of this place. It was kind of Oakland hipster to right, me, yeah. with just this really cool menu. When people say, "Oh, you have to have the burger," it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs>
It, well, they use really phenomenal. premium meat. They use uh -huh. Acme bread. And, well, and, yeah. and we had the um, the oxtail poutine there. I oh, always wanted to yeah. try that. that the yeah. oxtail like comes on French fries it, and this it's whole poutine, thing, yeah, right? It's, yeah. it's oxtail on the on the French fries. That's, the flavor was great. Mussels, uh, I've had mussels before. We had the mussels. I've never had mussels with that flavor. One thing that, that disappointed me there, though, and I was surprised, was the ribs. But huh. but uh -huh. everything else really was a big thumbs up. Well, mm -hmm. my, uh, my friend that I went with, he had the pork confit, and that was good. It looked so good, I had to have a try. The pork itself was great. The flavors were wonderful, but the star was actually, I thought, underneath the pork on a bed of polenta, some of the creamiest tastiest polenta I've ever had. And I'm not even that huge a fan of polenta, but they do it right. Yeah, with I think a little fiscalini cheddar on it. Yes. And they do these monthly pig roasts, which again are local, they're in the community, and they have local organic ice cream folks come, and, and uh, f fire pizza, brick oven type pizza folks mm -hmm. come. So that's kind of another cool local did thing to do. Did you save room do. for dessert on this one? I did. We <laughs> had butterscotch pudding, which mm -hmm. was which was really good with a little bit of cocoa nibs on it and uh, whipped cream. Nice. Anything with cocoa nibs is good. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. I really made it for me. I like, I'd like a whole like bucket of that. Wow. <laughs> we have something called the Boozy Woozy Shortbread that's Pudding, so and oh. that's, that, that lives up to the fun name. That is uh, a party in the mouth. It is really <laughs> fun. And you know what I like about the place especially is the decor. It has a great cozy neighborhood feel to it. The, the, Have that's a, a garage door with uh, glass oh, that, that they open up is? when the weather is nice. I Thank mean, it's you. a really welcoming space. And, and one thing, and I believe, unless it's changed, unless you have a party of six or more, there's no reservations. So that's one mm -hmm. thing. But right. there's cocktails. That right. there's cocktails. And the <laughs> wine <laughs> tap. Right. Grab a seat at the bar. That's often the best spot to eat. All right, um, this is your spot. Give us a quick wrap up, Andrew. If you're looking for a great place to hang out and good eats and a really great local uh, wine list and good cocktails, Chop Bar's the place. All right, and three. If you're looking for a great place to relax with friends and also a fabulous place to feed that big appetite, come in hungry because it is comfort food at its best. All right, and Raj. I love the vibe of Jack London Square and especially this restaurant, a unique menu and that's it, double thumbs up on my end. <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Chop Bar, it's on 4th Street at Alice near Jack London Square in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-834-2467. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are accepted for parties of six or more, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $20. Pinot Noir, I love it. I always say that if wines could show emotion, they would all have Pinot Envy. This elegantly stylish wine is the darling of wine insiders due to its ability to marry with a diversity of cuisines and food styles. Showcasing red berry freshness layered with hints of earthy notes and a spicy kick, it's a red that spans the spectrum, pairing as easily with grilled salmon as beef bourguignon. Thin-skinned and preferring cool climates, it's a bit of a diva grape, only growing successfully in a handful of places around the globe. The signature red variety of the Burgundy region of France, where it produces some of the world's most expensive wines, Pinot Noir has also adapted to other areas, including the cooler reaches of California, Oregon, and New Zealand. Related to the white grapes Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc, meaning Pinot Gray and Pinot White, Pinot Noir, or Pinot Black, is truly one to envy. Tweez Pick in the heart of North Beach is housed in a historic building that reflects on good times past while reveling in the cool times now. With modern takes on American bistro fare, sophisticated cocktails, and a broad selection of wine, it's all happening on Stockton Street at Washington Square at a place called Park Tavern. It's really a privilege to have a space like this in San Francisco. It's a historic location. It was Moose's for 17 years, Ed Moose was a neighborhood legend, and it's been a privilege to bring it back to life. I'm Anna Weinberg, the owner of Park Tavern. I really saw the need for a clubhouse in this neighborhood, not a touristy restaurant, somewhere for the neighbors. Russian Hill, Telegraph Hill, there was nowhere for them to convene. The most fun project of my life was designing this restaurant with my sister-in-law. Like, there's little bits of every restaurant that I've ever loved around the world in this restaurant. It's, it's on Washington Square Park, which is amazing. So I called it Park Tavern. I wanted something evergreen that felt like it always had been here and it always would be here. 
Hi, I'm Jennifer Fuccio. At Park Tavern, we have a really lovely large kitchen, and it allows me to do a lot of different preparations, techniques. We have a lot of different equipment here, so we can offer a menu that's large and constantly changing. We like to try and keep the food approachable with interesting twists on tradition. We only serve lunch on Fridays. My sous chefs and I go to the Marin Farmer's Market and then create a spontaneous menu to serve the guests the next day. We want great, simple food, really well prepared in an environment that feels very, very comfortable and energetic. I just wanted to think, that was so fun. All right, Tweet, this place is kind of, this is a hot spot. Yeah, I mean, it used it to is. be Moose's. It's it, in the mm -hmm. building that used to house Moose's, an Amer you know, classic San sure. Francisco restaurant. Yeah, and well, and then it became something else, and right. that didn't do too well. But right. I think this time around, Park Tavern might have the winning recipe. It might be onto something. It might have broken the Moose's curse, if you will, <laughs> uh, because you can come on any any night of the week. I was there recently on a Tuesday. It was packed at 6 in the evening, early dining crowd, multi-generational, a group of women behind us celebrating a birthday, at another table in front of me, an older couple enjoying their meal. So I really like that aspect of it. It really draws out all generations. It has huge floor-to-ceiling windows, so it's a great place to check out the action in North Beach. And um, just a great menu, very inventive. It's uh, for appetizers. You have your smoked raw and fried. And so from the smoked menu, I had one of my favorite things there, the deviled eggs. And I know deviled I had eggs, that too. you did. Oh my gosh, and great. you know deviled eggs. You kind of think, eh, yeah, but they're deviled yeah, eggs. Yeah, exactly. Deviled eggs, you know, <laughs> Come on. On. Yeah. Uh, but these are deviled eggs like none other. They have jalapeno on them, bacon, and they're just perfect, delectable little things. They really are. Some of the yummiest things I've ever had. <laughs> and did uh, you feel the same way when you ate the dumplings? I loved it. And, and Tui, I, what, what I would do with this, and I, I really enjoyed the yeah. restaurant, I would throw away the entrees and just order all the starters and all the appetizers, the raw, the yep. fried, everything. I had such a good time with our group tasting all the different things. Now I wish we'd had the eggs. On the <laughs> oh, you can go back. What about the Brussels sprout <laughs> chips? That's what we had, and I liked them, but they were a little too salty. It was the only letdown oh, of the yeah. entire evening. They are salty. Yeah. Also known for their poulet rouge. Ooh. Okay, you guys. <laughs> this was, yeah. oh my, have you had that before? I haven't had that. Okay, wow, it's a real experience. It's a showstopper because, you know, it's a Cornish game hen, so it's a plump young chicken. Um, I went with a pescatarian, so somebody who just is kind of vegan and does some fish, and I thought I would sort of quietly eat my chicken over here on the side, but the thing comes standing up on a skewer on a like a cast iron plate at attention like ta-da I'm the chicken I'm, <laughs> I'm here, here. here. Eat me. here's my top dance yeah it's kind of like on that beer turn. can chicken yeah. you know yeah. like I'm trying exactly. to carve it I mean you know it was not something you quietly sort of ate it was so moist and delectable and um, and you could uh, take the bread they gave you and sort of sop up the spinach mm. with the bread and um, it was great that's a dish that you kind of expect to be great because it sounds great, but even the most mundane things, they turn into great things, like the arugula salad. I feel, I thought, oh, I should have some vegetables, right? I'll get the arugula salad, not really expecting much. It was delicious. It was one of the highlights of the meal, and my friend agreed. It, the, it came with this buttery porcini mushrooms that just melted in your mouth. It played off so nicely off of the bitterness of the arugula. Mm. And it had a charred onion vinaigrette on the bottom, and you could just scoop that up. I mean, it was thick. You could scoop it up with yeah. your fork. It was so delicious. I do want to jump back and say the halibut was another dish we had, which was so good. It was in this, and I don't know what's happened to our journalist uh, like cynicism because <laughs> we've completely lost it here. We yeah, have liked all, all of the restaurants. Uh, we've just got such all. great taste, people. <laughs> We're not jaded people. Oh, come on. But these are your favorites. These are some it's of your favorites. Yeah. So, uh, all yeah. restaurants have been, yeah. uh, they've all been really nice. This yeah. one, this halibut was poached and it was in a savory sort of parsley miso broth uh, with peas and fern head, fiddlehead fern. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm, oh. Yes. To me, let's be really honest here. This place was, yes, the food is nice. Mm hmm but it's seen. It's, it's a, hopping. It, 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 well, is the, it is the yeah. place, and, and almost has a New York vibe to me. It does. It, it does. And it's really hip, a mm. night out, and very New Yorkish to me, and I liked it. Yeah. And you know what's nice? They redid the restaurant, but they still kept some elements of the old mooses. So the old moose head is still there, and Mrs. Moose, I hear, still comes in every week and <laughs> orders the same drink every week. So there's still that nice sense of tradition, uh -huh. even though they've really taken it and made it their own.
Okay, let's talk drinks now. Because <laughs> you don't go to this place without getting a cocktail. I mean, they have really top shelf cocktails. To me, there. this is a martini place, and that's exactly what <laughs> I got. I, d I didn't want to mess around with anything. Mm -hmm. Just be prepared because it, it's not a cheap night, no, at least no, if, no. if you're doing it right. Yes. And it starts from the valet right up front all the way through. Yeah. So be prepared for a good time, but you got to bring your wallet. All right, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us. Um, lively, quite a scene, good people watching good food to match, and also a great place to walk around after dinner. You get to see all the lively action in North Beach. Not all of it PG-13 action, but action. <laughs> all right, and Andrea? This is a great place to go if you're in North Beach or nearby for a top-notch meal and great service. And Raj? I like it. I think it's, uh, it's a date night. It's a night out. Be prepared for, uh, for a wild scene in a good way, and it's a really unique menu. All right, if you would like to try Park Tavern, it's on Stockton at Washington Square in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-989-7300. It's open for dinner every day with lunch on Fridays and brunch on weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab without drinks is around $35. I want to thank my fabulous guests on this week's show. We featured Raj Mathai and traditional fare at Roti Indian Bistro in Burlingame. Andrea Kissick, who supports her environmentally friendly eatery, Chop Bar, in Oakland. And Twee Vu with her hip dining destination, Park Tavern in San Francisco. Have you tried any of these locations? Let us know what you think by adding your comments to our website. You'll find us at kqed.org. It's where you'll find links to our Facebook and Twitter pages. And if you want, you can even download a whole show. My notes on the wines we're drinking and enjoying today are there too. So don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, that was fun. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! This show is available in high definition, on demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash checkplease. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Rancho La Puerta Spa and Fitness Resort in Mexico provides a wide variety of fitness vacation options for the start of a healthy new lifestyle. RanchoLaPuerta.com Oakland International Airport. Now you can enjoy some of your local favorites when you travel to and from the Bay Area. Fly Oakland International. It's your airport. Charitable Auto Resources, urging you to donate your car to KQED's vehicle donation program to help raise funds for quality public broadcasting. A KQED HD production.